what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Stiff Arm. Today's video, GBR, Go Big Red, back and better than ever. Year two under Matt Rule. It's going to be a very exciting year. Easier schedule, to say at least. Conference early alignment. There's some new teams in the Big Ten. Uh, can Nebraska finally make its way back to relevancy and be a contender in the college football playoff? I think they can be, but we'll get into that in this video. Uh, if you haven't already, go check out the channel for more previews and predictions. I have a lot of Big Ten up already. So after this video, of course, go check that out. Uh, but let's get right into 2023 for Nebraska Cornhuskers. Uh, taking a look at last season, uh, five and seven, three and six, and they were close in a lot of these games. First game of the year, the Minnesota game was very disappointing. Uh, they lost ten thirteen at Colorado. Things got a little out of control. Fourteen thirty six. Jeff Sims looked terrible that game. Uh, and then you lose to Michigan later on season national championship seven forty five, uh, and then at Michigan State seventeen to twenty game you shouldn't have lost. Uh, Maryland ten thirteen. Uh, at Wisconsin, 17-24 in overtime. Um, and then the last game of the year, Iowa, 10-13. to So you're losing all these games on one possession uh, right there in reach. And you could have went bowling. You could have had a way better season. Uh, but that's first year head coach. Uh, both coordinators return. But the most exciting thing about this team next upcoming year, Dylan Royal. They're starting five-star car, five star freshman quarterback, committed to Ohio State. Went to Georgia or committed to Georgia, and then his uncle got him to commit to Nebraska. I think this is really good for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Uh, the Cornhusker Nation, everybody on Twitter is very excited about him. Spring game, throwing for 239 yards and two touchdowns, looking exactly like Patrick Mahomes. And quarterback was the huge reason why they went 5-7 and seven last year. Like I said earlier, Jeff Sims was really bad the first two games before um, Heinrich took over for Purdy took over for the other quarterbacks took over and, and it was combined all the quarterbacks last year 10 passing touchdowns 10 pass touchdowns and 16 interceptions this, this team was really bad at the quarterback position and if you get a Dylan Rayo, like it's going to be challenging he's a fresh he's a freshman quarterback there's going to be some growing pains there but with this defense behind him, I think this team can be really good. Uh, he's got to really rely on his run game. If somebody can pop up out of the receiver room and really be that that one solidified dog in that room, I think it really helped Dylan Rayola. Let's get into the improved running back room that I think is going to happen this year. Uh, Emmett Johnson, Gabe Irvin Jr. return. Uh, Johnson at 411 yards and two touchdowns last year. Gabe Irvin, 196 yards and one touchdown. And then Tante Dowell transferred from Oregon. He was a four-star recruit from the 2023 class. So he went to Oregon, didn't like it, now transferred to Nebraska. I think these three can really improve the run game. I'm not sure Dylan Mariola is really going to get going in the run game. I'm um, not sure if that's really what he's capable of doing. I don't know if Nebraska really wants to use that element quite yet. We'll see if that happens because, I mean, Heinrich, he was the, he had the most rushing yards last year out of anybody. So that really shows you how good that rushing attack, being sarcastic, was good last year. Uh, but let's get into this receiver room real quick. No receiver had over 400 yards last year. And like I said earlier, 10 touchdowns, 16 interceptions. That's kind of what's going to happen. Uh, Jamal Banks transferred from Wake Forest. A very under, under, Rated receiver. I think he's one of the best receivers in, in Big Ten this year. I think he will, will be all Big Ten kind of guy heading after this year, heading out of this year. Uh, over two seasons at Wake Forest, 101 catches, 1,289 yards, and 13 touchdowns. Isaiah Naylor also transferred from Texas. Uh, he went to Wyoming for two years and transferred to Texas and got banged up and didn't play the rest of the year. Uh, but it's two seasons at Wyoming, 52 catches. 1,126 yards and 13 touchdowns over two seasons. A really fast guy, really elusive guy, and it shows you the 52 catches to 1,000 yards compared to Banks. He had 100 to the same amount of, he had 50 more catches and pretty much the same amount of yards. I'm uh, really excited about these two. I think Banks is going to be a wide receiver one, but I think Naylor can really be a speed guy, uh, really get creative with him and the reverse game and use him in motion and everything like that. Very excited about these two receivers. And then Jalen Lloyd, Alex Burlock, and Makai, uh, Malachi Coleman also return with experience. Malachi Coleman, I think, is going to be that third receiver in the mix with these two transfer receivers as well. You got four returning offensive linemen, and I think that's really going to help out Raiola, help out this running game as well. If Raiola only had one returning lineman or two returning linemen, I think that would not be the best situation for him. Kind of be a Colorado-esque kind of thing where you just can't, 
you know, you don't have enough time back there in the pocket, still adjusting to the game. But for four, he's going to have a lot of time, um, a lot of time for quick game, a lot of time for play action, a lot of time for deep shots downfield. I'm really excited about this, having four offensive linemen return. You return the three defensive linemen in the system, uh, three, three, five. Having three return is going to be crazy. Jamai, uh, uh, Jamari Butler, uh, I think he's really going to be explosive off the edge coming back another year. Ty Robinson, and of course, you got Nash Hutchmaker coming back. They all re- combined for 11 sacks and 20 and a half TFLs last year. I think that's really important. The Rover, uh, Isaac Guilford, returns 86 tackles last year, playing that Rover slash safety position. He had six and a half TFLs as well. This defensive back room is very experienced as well. Bly Hill transferred from St. Francis in Pennsylvania playing cornerback. Tommy Hill also returns playing corner. Marquise Buford, uh, I know Nebraska fans are very excited about him. Uh, shout out to Brooke. Uh, um, Malcolm Hartsburg playing safety. And Deshaun Singleton also playing safety. So you got a lot of guys that can move around, play different spots. Uh, I think the rover position is very important that he's coming back. A lot of his defense is going to be coming back, um, but you just got a lot of people playing different spots that have experience. So I think that's going to be great for this offense, especially Tony White being one of the best coordinators in college football. Uh, let's go into the breakout slash X factors. My first one, Jamal Banks, uh, transfer from Wake Forest receiver. One of these receivers is going to have to be huge and step up. Uh, you saw Rayola in the spring game. He looked really, really well. If that can happen week to week and even get that towards the end of the year, that can be really well. But you got to lean on a receiver. you got to lean on something as a freshman. I think Jamal Banks would be that guy. But Marquise Buford, I think he's very versatile playing cornerback and safety. He's done that at both at Nebraska. Uh, if you go to different sites, some have him playing safety, some have him playing corner. I think that's how versatile he's going to be that he can move around and, and guard anybody you want. Uh, he had 80 tackles and five and a half TFLs over three seasons. If he can get a fully healthy season, I really think Marquise Buford is going to be one of the best defensive backs in all of Big Ten, probably one of the best defensive players in the Big Ten. Uh, and then you got Jamari Butler, eight and a half TFLs and th- five and a half sacks. Last season is really going to be good off the edge. Uh, and, you know, Tony White, the three through five, you can get really creative with the scheme. You can get really uh, creative with the blitzes and everything coming like that. And I really think Jamari Butler is going to have a big year. Let's get into these coordinators. Uh, Marquis Satterfield, second year's offense coordinator at Nebraska. He's been with Matt Rule at Temple, Baylor, and with the Panthers. Uh, he left the Panthers, though, to be the OC for South Carolina in 2021 and 2022. I think the biggest thing about him, I think the Masked Man is very excited. He coached P.J. Walker, old Temple quarterback. He played in the NFL for a little bit, XFL. Uh, he was a freshman All-American at Temple. And Dylan Rayola, he's a freshman as well. So I think it's really good to have Marcus Satterfield with experience coaching freshman quarterbacks and having coach freshman quarterbacks being on the field at the same time. And he also improved Spencer Rattler from Oklahoma to South Carolina. I think there's another thing as well. And then defense coordinator Tony White running that 3-3-5. Uh, he's one of the best quarterback corner uh, coordinators in college football. He's going to be a future head coach. So Nebraska fans, you've got to, you know, appreciate him while he's here. Uh, really be thankful that you have a great defensive coordinator in him. He almost left for the UCLA job. I don't know if he almost left, but he was rumored for that. Everybody thought he'd be going to UCLA. So he's staying in Nebraska, which is a huge, huge keep for Matt Rule in the corner. Uh, it's getting to head coach Matt Rule, 5-7 and seven last year's first season at Nebraska, but 52-20 and 20 over his college career, Temple, Baylor, and Nebraska. And he's always had really bad first years. Uh, Temple, I think they won two games. Baylor, they won one game. Nebraska won five games, uh, and he's always turned them around and turned them to competitors. And I think this is the year to do it for Nebraska. The Big Ten, it's it's not wide open, but with the divisions gone and it's just a new age of the Big Ten, if you can get up and win, that'd be really, really good. Uh, let's get into the College Football Power Index, the FPI. 4.8, which is 41st in the college football and 10th in the Big Ten, so they're not big fans of them. Uh, let's get into the schedule, though. Everybody's talking about the schedule for Nebraska, and I'm really high on the schedule, really high on the Cornhuskers, as you can see. First game, UTEP, that's a dub. Colorado, I wanted to make it a toss, but I'm really excited about Nebraska. I really think they can go into uh, what they did last year. They went into Boulder. They had a chance. They pissed on their leg and gave the buffs the game 
at home is a different story. A very experienced team this year. I think they can get it done. I think the biggest thing they'll do is win in the trenches. I think that's something Colorado's really got to learn. And you're getting them week two with a very happy transfer portal team. They haven't. They're not gelled together yet. They're not really playing together yet. This team has been around for a while. They they got experience playing together. I think the brass is going to beat them week two. Northern Iowa dub. Illinois, I think that's going to be a dub. At Purdue, tricky game just because how playing at Purdue is always weird. Uh, I think that's a dub as well. Rutgers, I think it's a tougher game. Playing up at Lincoln, though, that's a dub. At Indiana, I think that's a dub. Nebraska's going to be 7-0, and 6-1 maybe, uh, heading into the Ohio State game. And they're going to be, this might be college game day. They might be top 15, top 10 at this point. College football playoff contenders. Um, I, I think this is going to be L. I think Nebraska fans really see Ohio State as one of the best teams in college football. And they know they're not at that level yet. Maybe they'll get there in, in next year or the year after. But they're just not quite there yet. So I'm going to put it as L. UCLA dub. At USC, USC has always been a great team with Lincoln Riley. He's got one of the best offenses in college football. So how is Lincoln Riley's offense got a pair against Tony White's defense? Going to UCLA, a, a site you're not really too familiar with yet, uh, being a new Big Ten team. I just put it as a toss-up game. Uh, they're a really good team. Uh, two of the best uh, two best teams in Big Ten. Wisconsin, I put it as a toss as well. Uh, I think Nebraska and Wisconsin, they're going to be very experienced second la- second last game of the year, and they're going to be ready to play each other. Uh, and then at Iowa, I think at Iowa is a tough game just because their defense is going to be really, really good. But how is their offense going to be? Are, are they going to be able to score points like last year? Are they going to be able to do what they did last year? Because it was only, what, it was 10 to 13 last year? If Nebraska can get going and have a way better offense, which they will in 2022 or in 2024, I mean, then he can maybe beat Iowa. But at Iowa, I think it's a hostile environment to win at. Our friends over there in Vegas have this over-under win total at 7.5. And, and I have Nebraska win in nine games for sure, uh, in my opinion. I have two toss-ups and two losses. Uh, I'm really excited for this Nebraska team in 2024. I really think this is the year um, that Matt Rule can turn it around and this could be a huge time year uh, with Dylan Raiola with all his defense coming back with Tony White as defense coordinator. I'm really excited and really high on this Nebraska corner team in 2024. That's all I have today's video, though. Comment on what you guys think of Nebraska wins. Uh, what do you think they're going to be in 2024? Do you think they're going to win more than seven and a half games? Uh, do you think they're going to fall on their face? How do you think Dylan Raiola is going to do? Let me know in the comment section down below. Of course, subscribe to the Stiff Arm. I got a lot of videos like this coming on the channel. So if you're new to the channel, like new to Nebraska fan, uh, Subscribe to the Safari and help me out. Go a long way. Um, be making more Nebraska videos as well. So let me know down in the comment section. Of course, subscribe to the Farm. That's all I have for today's video, though. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.